Okay, we're going to do reflexology here at Broward College, and we're going to add a foot bath ritual in the beginning to prepare their feet. We're going to start with a heel rescue foot cream. We're going to do a little couple of minute massage in the beginning. This is really good to help soften up the skin on the feet. Then we're going to do a scrub, a product with pumice in it. It's really great. It has a tea tree. It's very refreshing for the feet. Then while we're doing the reflexology treatment, we're going to use a very special type of powder. This has tea tree in it. It's a very fine French chalk, and uh, it works really, really well for the massage that we do. And then at the end, we're going to do a couple of minutes of massage with a foot balm. We're going to use warm towels to remove the product and clean the feet at the end. It's important to wear gloves when you're working with these products because they are very strong and you don't want to take the skin off. Now when you do the reflexology treatment itself, it's kind of up to you if you want to leave the gloves on or not. Here at Broward, we use a product called Derma Shield that we always put on our hands before we go any time of treatment to protect our skin. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the feet, make sure there's no cuts, there's no bruises, there's no problems, and uh, you're going to clean both together, but then when you start working on the foot, you're only going to do one at a time. And it doesn't matter which one you want to start with, but you're only going to do one at a time. Now while you're applying these products, it's a choice of the therapist whether they want to massage both feet at the same time, or one, then the other, or a combination. So although you do follow a protocol, there are places in that protocol that gives you a chance to do a little artistic license with what you're doing. And while you're working, you have to remember to use the proper body mechanics. Just as though you were standing when you do your massages, you have to practice the same technique when you're sitting. So you need to keep both feet on the ground. You need to keep your pelvic tucked and do what's an Alexander technique, which is called sky hook. That means you pretend there's a balloon over your head and you're attached to it and it's holding you up. That allows you to elongate your spine and keep your shoulders dropped. You don't need to tense up when you're doing this technique. Pay attention to the heel because most people have problems on the heel. Now we're going to clean the feet. This has pumice in it, so it's very strong. Be careful of the top of the foot. You don't want to put any pressure up there. And the places where they need the scrub, you do more scrub there. And this isn't a massage, this is a scrub. You only need maybe a teaspoon of the product for each foot. Now you can remove your gloves, turn them inside out. I'm going to get some towels. Safety on the stool is very important. Every time you sit down on a stool that has wheels, you must hold it. If you just sit down, the stool will go in one direction and you'll go in the other.
and we're just going to let it soak. and then we're going to remove the product. We fold towels in a special way here at Brower. We fold them lengthwise so that I have four cleaning surfaces. The first one was the first one I put on against his skin. Now I'm going to turn it over and use the other side that's still clean. And I'm going to remove more of the product. Then I can fold it in half with the clean side out and now I have two more clean surfaces that I can use to clean the foot. Now don't try to get every little granule off because that's just not going to happen. Once the foot is dry, we're going to brush them off. First one side and then the other. Then fold it in half, clean side out, and you have two more surfaces. So I'm going to start working on the right foot first. I'm going to place his other leg down so that it's out of the way. When you're sitting in front of your work, as if you're doing a Swedish or anything else, the, the key is that your elbows are at your side. So you want to position the table with the person on it where they're right in front of you and you don't have to bring your hands up or down to work on the feet. So now we're going to apply the powder. Be careful how you take it out of the bottle. Don't shake it into the air. You want to put it as close to your palm as possible because you don't want that dust in the air where you can breathe it. Rub your hands together and put it on the foot. Now if their feet are sweaty, you may have to add more powder. And that's okay. I'm just going to put some on his other foot now just to keep it dry and I'll apply some more when I pick it up. Okay, the routine has what we call the therapy part and then desserts. Desserts are things that you throw in that feel good to the foot and help loosen it up. Loosen it up. But the main technique that you're going to use is something called inchworm or thumb walking. You can do it with your thumb do it with your index finger, your tall finger, or all four fingers. You can even do it with your knuckle. Knuckles aren't as effective. Your thumb is probably the best, but you don't want to wear it out. So if I'm going to use it a lot, I'm going to use it in a special way. You don't want to ever bend your thumb, your interphalangeal joint, a lot. If you rest it on your index finger, you're going to have support behind it when you use it. So the inchworm is a pull and a release pull and a release. If I'm going to try to go deeper and remove something, I'm going to use what was called a hook and backup. Now I am going to use my thumb because I'm trying to go deeper. So an inchworm looks like this. And a hook looks like this. I stay on the same spot and I go deeper and lay my thumb into that one spot. The desserts are what we call side to side. You're going to hold the foot with both hands and you're going to shake it up and down. 
the foot is going to invert and evert. You can travel up and down the foot when you do this. Hook and ankle. You're going to use the hypothenar eminence at the heel of your palm. Put them in a V. You're going to put them right below the malleolus on either side. Hold the foot and make it go side to side. So I call this windshield wipers. A spinal twist is where you move your stool around and put both hands on the instep of the foot, but you don't slide. You're wringing the foot. Pull it up and down, and you're trying to loosen up all those bones in the foot. This is spinal twist. Ankle rotation. You're going to use your opposite hand. You're going to hold the instep and put your thumb on that point, which is called the solar plexus. It's also kidney one. You're on the transverse arch of the foot and the diaphragm line. So when you press in there, you want to see the toes wave at you. You know you're in the right spot. So I'm going to hold that. And what your client should feel when you do this technique is you pushing into that point. You're giving them a little energy as you work. Your other hand, first position, is going to be holding the heel. Always put a little traction in your work like you would do for Swedish. And you're going to pull back with your whole body. So it's not your muscles, you're just turning your whole body to make a circle. See how the toes are waving at me? Then I'm going to switch this hand, put the thenar eminence at the top of the foot, and now I'm going to press forward against the thenar eminence. And again, the client feels your thumb and their solar plexus. We're going to do toe rotations. When you do toe rotations, you have to be very careful. You're not going to grab the nail in, under any circumstances, but you're going to hold at the base, at the MTP joint. Put a little traction on it and wiggle the toe around. Go down to the next one, do the same thing, down to all of them. We're going to do this twice, so the second time you go through the toes, make it different. Maybe add a little vibration to it so that it doesn't feel exactly the same. Now the landmarks on the foot, the head is the big toe. These two toes reflex for the eyes, these two reflex for the ears, the top is the sinus reflex. So if this is the head, this is the neck, you're going to find the pituitary point, look at the toenail swirl, the toe print, where it comes together is right there and it's usually a little point, it's usually higher than the rest of the toe. We're going to hook that point when we do our routine. The top of the toe is the brain. So here's the neck, here's the pituitary, here's the brain. Eyes, ears, sinuses. The dorsum of the foot is the more superficial part of the body for the chest area, the thoracic cage. So to access the upper body lymphatic system, I'm going to work right here, and the breast tissue, I'm going to work right here. Now for the deeper part of the thorax, the deeper organs, I'll work on the ball of the foot. So this is where you're going to find the heart, the esophagus, the trachea, the lungs, all of those things that are in the thorax of the body are going to be reflected right here. This is the shoulder line where the toes meet the foot. So everything above that line is going to be above the shoulders on your body. From here to here is everything that's in your chest or thoracic region. From here to here is your abdominal pelvic. There's really only one reflex through the heel for your sciatic nerve, but it's rather difficult to get to, so I'm going to use another one that's easier and more effective. The pouch that you see right there on the end step is your bladder, and just like on your body, what goes right through the center of your body is the spine, so here's your spine. Under each malleolus on either side is your gonads, the anterior would be the uterus and prostate. The outside would be the ovaries and testes. Then a bracelet around the ankle is for the lower body lymphatics. It's also for the fallopian tube and the vas deferens. The sciatic reflex that's much easier and more effective is the Achilles tendon. So we're just going to pinch up the Achilles tendon for the sciatic nerve. Now the hip region is lateral, so it's going to be on the outside of the foot, just like your hips and your arms are attached to the outside of your axial skeleton, it's also just on the lateral side. 
Under the malaya list, that little fat pad is representing the hip bones themselves, the pubic symphysis. The heel, where the calcaneal bone is, is for the hip. Now, if I want to work on the arms and legs, I'm going to pinch the outside of the foot. Under the little toe pad right there, that represents your scapula, that's your shoulder. And if I pinch down the outside of the foot to a little bump, right under it is a notch. This is your fifth metatarsal bone, and it doesn't go all the way down. It only goes down to about right there. This represents your arm coming up the outside of the foot to that notch would represent your legs. So you can do a complete body uh, workout with working on the feet. It's kind of a hologram for the rest of the body. But basically what this is best based on is the electromagnetic current that runs through the body and it travels in zones. This is the first zone, second, third, fourth, fifth. In its original form, it was called zone therapy by Dr. Uh, Fitzgerald. And a friend of his, a colleague, um, had a physiotherapist working for him named Eunice Ingham. And when she was taught this, she kind of elaborated on it and brought it more into uh, working with the feet to reflex all the organs in the body. So she called it a different name. She didn't work just in the, the zones. She also pointed out where within those zones would different organs be. So that's how all this came about. We're going to start the routine. We're going to follow the foot, but we always follow the energy. So if this is zone number one, this is where I'm going to start. And this is the top of the body, so I'm going to start here. So your pattern has to be superior to inferior, medial to lateral. We'll do the head, we'll do the thorax, we'll do the abdominal pelvic, the arms and the legs. And then we're going to throw in things we call desserts. So the side to side, the hook and ankle, the ankle rotation, the spinal twist, those are all called desserts. You can add others and if you'd like, uh, whatever you think would feel good for the foot. I do something called hand washing. So I'm gonna use the heel of my palm and I'm just gonna, like you would wash your hands, you do your hands just like this. And you're gonna rotate those little MTP joints at the base of the toes. And you can walk your hand over and walk your hand back. Or you can do something called metatarsal kneading, and that means you just get in there and work into those bones in the metatarsal. Is that okay? Now, if we're not going to hook, we can do something called goading. Goading is where you just push into the foot, and you're not trying to scrape something off. You can do a couple of other things that we'll do at the end. Now, one of the things that we're going to do, I'm going to show you what the different techniques are first, and then we're going to go through the routine. So I'm going to walk from C7 around the base of the toe. I'm going to walk the shoulder line. I'm going to hook in the pituitary. I'm going to walk the top of the toe. I'm going to walk down the toes. And I'm going to walk on the dorsum surface as well. I'm going to walk down all those toes. And then I'm going to walk, and in here, I'm going to do it sideways. So on this foot, if you can see, between the metatarsals, we're going to try to open that up, try to get a little more space in there. So our inchworm is going sideways. We're going to walk the spine. We always start our walks with a hook, and then we're going to walk. We're going to walk here, the ball of the foot. We're going to go and hook the shoulder. We're going to pinch the arm. We're going to walk the upper part of the abdomen, throw in some desserts. When we do the lower abdomen, we're going to start with a point to give it some energy. So on the right foot, this is where the small intestine meets the large intestine. So we're going to do that point. It's called the ileocecal valve. The appendix is always right there, and it's a good point for allergies. So you're going to start your line with that. Hook that point. On the other foot, on the left foot, it's the sigmoid colon. It's where the large intestine ends and goes on to the rectum. And it's in the middle. It will be right here. Then we're going to walk this part of the arch of the foot, but we're going to come over to the bladder. So we're going to walk on the bladder and then do the second half of the foot. Okay? We're going to walk the spine. We're going to reflex the Achilles tendon, walk the hip, and do the leg. Then we'll finish with the gonads. We're going to pull on the 
uterus, prostate, ovaries, testes, and walk for the lower body lymphatics. Now at the end, if you want to, if you feel a need to do this, it's just a good idea anyway, because once you've done all this, your goal was to work all of the impurities and toxins that have settled out in the feet and get rid of them. So they need to get back up the leg. If you worked it all loose and then you just let it sit there, maybe you weren't as good as you could have been because you didn't flush the foot afterwards. So I'm going to add a little lymph drainage technique to what I'm doing. But you always have to do lymph drainage last. You can't do it and then do circulatory stimulating work. It just doesn't, you just did away with everything you tried to do with the lymph drainage. So I'm always going to add that at the end. You're going to hold the foot like this and you're going to plantar flex and dorsiflex. You're just going to bring it up and down, up and down. And as you're doing that, you're going to pump with your fingers into the tarsal bones. And if you have a very edematous foot, somebody who has uh, diabetes or heat makes your feet swell too, and you want to try to get all that out, you might spend more time on it. If you're just working with the foot because you stimulated everything, maybe a couple of times you'd have to do it. Now, like in Swedish and in therapy, the magic number for your feet is three. So I'm going to do it at least three times. And you're just going to pump as you bring the foot up and down. And what you're doing inside those bones, this is where all the nodes are for the lymph vessels. There's a plexus in the foot, many, many, many uh, lymphatic vessels, vessels are down here, but they kind of congregate and there are nodes in the joints themselves. And these, if you pump on them, you'll help the fluids come out of the foot. Okay, so we're going to start our routine. We're going to walk through the foot first and do everything. If we find something that we want to come back and spend more time on, we're going to go back through the foot and focus on those areas. You don't have to do the routine the same twice, but you are going to come back and do something a little specific to that person at that time. So we're going to start with our desserts. So we're going to shake up the foot. Everybody's foot will flop differently. Some are really loose, some aren't. Then we're going to hook in the ankle. Move your stool to face your work, spinal twist. This hand stays on, this hand comes under, ankle rotation. <clears throat> We're going to start by working on the neck. We're going to do the head first. So we're going to hook. If you look at the side of the foot, you'll see something sticking out right there. That is um, the seventh cervical vertebrae. So we're going to hook that. Can I start over? Just from when I started doing the routine. Oh, okay, yeah, not, just I just cut it out. Okay, hello. Okay. So let me start over. All right. Okay, this is the routine we're going to do with the foot. So we're going to start with side to side. We're going to do hook and ankle. We're going to do spinal twist. Ankle rotations. Lung press. And solar plexus. We're going to hook the seventh cervical. You'll see a crease at the base of the toe. Right there is a, a prominent bone that sticks out. Hook that and walk the base of the toe. Now whenever you work on a certain area of the body, you have to support it. So I've got my hand behind the toes to support them. Hook the pituitary and walk the top of the toe. Now we're going to rotate them. Support the foot.
Then we're going to walk down the plantar surface, so I have to move my stool to get in position and support the back of the toes. And I'm going to use all my fingers to walk all at the same time. Side to side. We're going to walk the, sh the shoulder line for the reflexes for the eyes and the ears. Support the foot. Now you're going to walk the dorsum of the toes. You're going to start with the big toe and work down. And then all the toes. Now we're going to go between the metatarsals. And now we're going to walk the ball of the foot. Hold the foot, and you want to get this rhythm. It's the heartbeat. Try to do it 60 beats per minute. But the more rhythmical it is, the more relaxing it will be. And you notice the toes are waving at me, so I know I'm doing it right. Lung press and solar plexus. Now we're going to come over and do a little extra work on the shoulder. This reflex is for the shoulder. So I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm going to hook and goad. And then I'm going to pinch down the outside of the foot just to the notch for the arms. A little side to side. Final twist. Now I'm going to work the upper half, so from the diaphragm line to that fifth metatarsal notch, I'm going to work the foot. I'm going to do the same as I did on the ball of the foot. I'm just going to start here, superior to inferior, medial to lateral. This one I'm going to do a little different, a little vibration in there. Come back. Now this is the right foot, so I'm going to hook the ileocecal valve. I'm going to work the lower abdomen, but I'm going to start on the bladder. rotation. Now we're going to walk the spine. We're going to start with a hook and we're going to walk up the spine. Stay where you feel soft tissue. If you go too high, you're going to be on that first metatarsal and it's not very comfortable.
this final twist. Hold the foot like you did for the ankle rotation because you're going to need your lateral hand to do the next steps. We're going to pinch up the Achilles tendon for the sciatic nerve. We're going to inchworm just under the malleolus for the pubic symphysis. Then we're going to reflex the hip. We're going to walk the hip. Then pinch for the leg. Side to side. Now, if you, if you don't know where to look for these points, this is a, a guideline for you. You're going to use your thumb and your tall finger. You're going to put your thumb on the heel of the foot and your tall finger on the malleolus. And where your index drops down is the point you want to get. Medial is uterus and prostate. Lateral is testes and ovaries. So with that same finger that I found the point, I'm just going to hook both sides at once. And then I'm going to walk up the foot to make a bracelet with my little inch one. Be careful at the top that you don't pinch the skin. And a hook and ankle. Now you can go back and work parts that you found that you would want to work on for them. So if you felt crunchies and heard noises, you can come back here, do a little more of this. If they've been telling you about headaches that they have, you might want to do the eye reflexes and come back to the top of the foot, the toe. Maybe they need a little extra work with the urinary system. So how you find the kidneys is you're going to extend the big toe. When you do that, you're going to see a tendon pop out for the flexor hallucis longus. The waistline is that fifth metatarsal notch on the foot. If you come over to the lateral side of that tendon, you're going to be on the kidneys. So you can do your little hooks right there on the kidneys. Then you can walk your finger over to the bladder and do that system. Now, this is a good thing to do. You can do this quite a bit. But there are some organs you shouldn't do a lot of work on. And one would be the liver. Because the liver is very delicate. It's carrying off all these toxins. And you don't want to overtox the blood. Now, I usually do a little bit of a massage at the end, and this powder has such great slip, you don't need oil. You can do anything that you want to do on the skin with this powder. So if you want to add more to the foot, you can. But just to work the tissues that are in there. hand washing. Maybe another spinal twist. And a lung press. What feels nice is after you've done the other foot, the last thing you should do is a polarity move, and that's where you hold both feet at the same time on the solar plexus to connect in a circuit. Now it's up to you to use warm towels or not. The powder is perfectly fine to be left on the foot, but people enjoy the warm towels. So I usually do a little bit of foot balm at the end on the feet. Massage it in and then put hot towels on. Safety first, hold that stool.
good way to test a towel, if you could put it there on the, the inside of your elbow, just like for a baby, it's good enough there, it's probably going to be good enough for their feet. Now, there's some more desserts you can do that you can do before you put the towels on or with the towels to help open up that foot. If I get up and stand right there, would that be okay? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. All right, this is called fat feet because this is exactly what you're doing. Is you're trying to make those feet wide. You're going to line your fingers up, hold the foot, and when you pull back on the foot, you're going to try to spread apart those metatarsals. So I'm leaning back and spreading. Going over the next two, lean back and spread. Go over the next two, lean back and spread. So get in a very wide archer stance and pull those little bones apart. And then we're going to do something called popsicle sticks. We're going to go up and down with the metatarsals to try to loosen them up. So one hand goes up and one hand goes down. Same thing over here, fat feet. Popsicles. And you're done.